Good morning, everyone. Most of the people is coming from their rooms to the sanctuary. But let me just uh, remind you that uh, we have the bulletin at the enter. And I would like to thank Brother Bo and Pastor for all the work that implies to print this out, to have the information on your hands. I just ask him, please, you read at home all the events that we're going to have during the week. And then please be aware of all of them and try to participate in at least half of them. Nowadays, the young people, the people at the church, they can say, oh, that's a boring church, nothing happened. A lot of things are happening. And let me just highlight these ones. Adventures induction today at 6 p.m. Prayer and fasting program every Wednesday at 6 story. Women ministry, 10 story uh, coming Saturday. And after the Adventures induction today, in two weeks, they're going to be in Camp Alamisco, just celebrating. And the last one is in November, a special day. Very, very special because it's going to be outside the sanctuary. It's going to be out, picnic at the park. We're going to have a different kind of worship there. It's going to be outside. It's going to be some special activities. And the best thing is we can invite friends. Friends that never is going to think to go to the church, but you can take them to the park. And they're going to love it. All right? Thanks again for every one of you being here and being the watch with us. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. And also to our brothers and sisters who are, who are watching online. We are the praise team today's wonderful Sabbath morning. We would like to welcome our visitors today. Welcome to Panama City SDA Church. Um, we are very glad you are here with us today to start today's service. We're going to worship God through song, but first, I am going to read the verses from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, about the first song we are going to sing. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb Amen. who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Our first song is Worthy is the Lamb. Please sing with us as we worship an awesome God together. Amen. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb. We all sing together, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the prize you paid. Let us sing. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. For the nail pierced wash me in your cleansing flow. Now I know your forgiveness and embrace. What is the land seated on the throne? Victor! 
together one more time. to God. God is indeed wonderful. Amen. He is indeed amazing. And with this, we're about to sing this song. It's called Indescribable. The love that God has for us is indescribable, brethren. Amen. Amen. There are no words to compare to or to, to say how much God loves and appreciates us. Indescribable. This is a new song, but we can all see the lyrics and sing together to Jesus. Indescribable. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creation's revealing your majesty. From the colors so far to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are amazing. Isn't God amazing? He Amen. is. Who has told every line is but where it should go? Or see heavenly storehouses laden with snow? Who imagined the sun 
and give joy to this light. Yet conceals it to bring us to coolness of life. No one can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Oh, powerful, untamable, all trust we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. We are without form and void, but God has made us whole, and we are brand new people. You are amazing, God. Amen. Yeah. Glory be to God. You are amazing, God. Let's all sing it together one more time. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. And it's you place the stars in the sky and you know the fire. You are amazing, God. Hallelujah. Incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. One more time, you are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. And one last time. You are amazing, God. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, we are asking for your blessing. For our minds to be ready for the message. For pastor's mind that he can be the conduct for your word to go through our souls, our brains, and we can't be able to communicate with you. Bless this church. Bless the church all worldwide. And allow us, allow us to be reunited with all the people around the world in one faith. Because we're asking this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Sabbath. If you'll open with me in your hymnals, the hymnals number 334, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, number 334 in your hymnals. Come thou fount of every blessing to my heart to sing my grace. Streams of mercy Never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adorn thee. May I still thy goodness prove while the hope of endless glory. 
Es, mm. <laughs> es and Marina are from the Philippines. They built careers as government employees, holding high positions for many years. As when, Re, when Rowena got sick, their world of security and comfort came crashing down. Ace had no other initiative but to resign and take care of her. When Rowena was well enough to return to work, she resumed her career in education. But Ace had another plan. She felt called by God to dedicate himself full time to media ministries. Unfortunately, this new calling didn't pay as well as the previous position, nowhere close. At first, everything was as difficult as they expected. To make matters worse, they had to invest in technology to be able to serve better. They were living a simple life in a full assurance that they were at the center of God's will. This moved them to dedicate all their gifts to God. Many years have now passed and the transformation is unbelievable. Both Ace and Rowena now serve full time as key leaders of the Digital Evangelism, Evangelism Initiative, a global project of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They still lead a simple life and are now in a much better financial situation than they were when they were working for the government. They even have all the technology necessary to work for Jesus. Ace and Rowena put God first despite their fear and uncertainty about the future. Their courage inspires us today. Jesus gave up everything to redeem us and his love compels us to put his kingdom first in our own lives. As the deacons collect the tithe and offerings, we are challenged to put God first. Today's offering is for the local church budget. May the deacons please come forward. Dear Heavenly Father, we worship you this morning with our tithe and offerings. We pray for the courage to put you first in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen.
have the younger kids, not any older kids. <laughs> okay, good. God, see ya. I'm going to tell you a story this morning about a boy. Well, he wasn't a boy. He was a young man named Daniel. Have you ever heard of him? Daniel? You've heard about Daniel? Yeah. Well, this happened a long, long time ago, about 600 B.C. Do you know what the B.C. stands for? Before Christ. Yeah, that's right. That's a long time ago. Seeing that they were into 2021. Whew, long time ago. Well, it happened that Daniel and some of his buddies were captured and taken to Babylon by a king named Nebuchadnezzar. Can you name can you say Nebuchadnezzar? I didn't hear you. Nebuchadnezzar. That a boy. <laughs> yeah. And it happened that uh, they were pretty good guys. Uh, although they had one problem. And when they were in their systems and stuff over there, why they were kind of forced to eat what the king ate. And his name was what? Nebuchadnezzar, come on. Yeah, you know it, didn't you? Yeah. So he asked the guard that, there were, that was uh, corralling him and protecting him, hey, how about letting us eat fruits, grains, and nuts and water rather than what the king is eating with all that meat and the wine and all that stuff that wasn't good for him. And he says, uh, in a two weeks' time, if you think that we're not doing any better than they are, why well, will start eating your food. So what happened? They did. Hey, you want to tell the story? <laughs> That's right. They grew better. And so they were doing a lot of work for because of their uh, intelligence and their growth and everything. They had a lot of work for the, what the king and the king's men were doing. Well, one time... Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and uh, he called all of his magicians and preachers and all those people that are working for him to uh, interpret the dream and uh, they said well tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means and so they couldn't do it but the captain of the guard said that he knew somebody who could do that and his name was what? Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. You two guys ought to sit together because you know all of the answers. Okay, yeah, Daniel. And so Daniel came in and the king related to him his dream. And, and Daniel waited a while and he said, well, this is what's going to happen, king. This is that uh, it's going to happen in time. You're dreamt, said something that you had a big... Uh, statue and it was made of what head of gold chest of silver hips of bronze and legs of what what were the legs made of gold no iron and clay that's close we'll give you credit for that yeah and so what happened was is that the king accepted that. And so they built this statue. But then those people that kind of got mad about because Daniel told them what the dream was and uh, what it said, they were going to get those guys and said, hey, let's make a law that so that if they don't bow down to that statue, why, uh, we'll put them in jail, right? No, they were, they were going to be burned at the stake. Oh, I bet you that was hot, wasn't it? But they did. They did, didn't they? Yeah. Come on up here. You tell the story. No, no you stay there. Yeah. They were going to be put in the fire because they did not bow down to the statue. And why didn't they bow down? Yeah. Because it wasn't their God, was it? No. No. Huh? They only had one God. They weren't going to bow down to anybody else. And so they, what happened was is that they got thrown in a fiery furnace. Yeah. Ew. I bet. 
Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And that would happen too, is, is that, you know, the people that threw them in the furnace, they fell down on the ground. They fainted and passed away. That's so hot. If you ever had burned your finger on a stove or anything like that, I hope you didn't. Oh, I better not. Yeah. Oh she, yeah. oh, she did. Oh, that's too bad. But what happened when they were in the furnace? Yeah, they didn't get burned up. Yeah, because they get them the power. Yeah. Yeah. They get them. Um, the power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did a good job. Yeah, they get. They didn't get burned up, did they? They were walking around, all three of them, right? Oh, how many were in there? Four. Who was the fourth one? Jesus. Jesus, yeah. That's nice to have a buddy like that, a partner. You all have good partners, don't you? I hope Jesus is one of them. Because he's the best, right? Yeah, that's right. And that's the important thing for you to remember. That whatever's happened, God is going to be with you. Jesus is going to be with you and you have faith in him that he's going to help you out, right? Okay. That's right. Okay. Who would like to say the prayer? Oh, she raised her hand first. Is that all right? Ladies before gentlemen, remember? Okay. <laughs> okay, come on. Let's bow our heads. Keep my mommy be better, and I um my TikTok gonna come back. Okay, amen. Amen, amen. Now do me a favor. Would you guys do, do me a favor? When you go back to your mom and dad's, you do me a favor. I want you to go back and give them a big hug and a kiss. All right? That because that means you love them. Because you know what? They love you. And I love you too. Thank you there, young man. I appreciate you helping with me with the story. morning church family we have much to be thankful for today the sun is shining we're here today worshiping the Lord we have much to pray for we have much on our hearts we are we are sad to say goodbye to Miss Pearl we are, uh, have others in our other things on our hearts um, that I'm sure if we all spoke up right now we would all have things on our hearts that we could share so let's take those right now to the Lord. So as far as possible, let's say prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Father in heaven, we come before you today and we ask for your blessings. We thank you for the for the cooler air and the freedom that we have to come and worship you in your house today. We thank you for our families and we thank you for uh, your love. 
Father, we ask that you be with our hearts today as they are sad as we say goodbye to Miss Pearl. I ask that you be with the other prayer requests that we have. We have members who are sick or um, are saddened with other things on their hearts. I just ask that you be with us. You touch each one of us with your wisdom, your blessings, your, your courage, um, your peace. And we thank you for being with us today. May we honor you in all that we do. And we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to all of our friends, all of our visitors. Whether you are joining us online or you are here in person, we are excited that you have made this wise decision of coming and worshiping with us this morning. Um, if you are watching online, please drop down a comment letting us know where you are uh, joining us from. Last week, it was a blessing just to go over and see people saying Callaway and people saying Lynn Haven and, 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 and Panama City Beach and even Tennessee and other uh, places uh, in the States. So if you guys would do that this week, we would like to make that a custom and, and, and a tradition. Let us know where you are uh, so that we can pray for you and acknowledge your presence. For those of you who are here, welcome as well. I do uh, have some visitors this uh, morning. Um, I met Michael in the back. Michael, would you stand for a, uh, a moment? Michael is visiting us. I know that there's others that are here with us. If this is your first or your second time, would you please stand for a moment? I do see, um, remind me your name. This is the third time I ask you, I'm sorry. Celestino. Celestino has been a blessing uh, just in the Sabbath school class. Any other visitors that we have with us? No visitors? Okay, church family, now let's, let's just wave at them and say welcome to the Panama City SDA Church. You may be seated at this point. We are a multicultural church and we would like to get to know you a little bit better, okay? So church family, make sure that you say hi to our visitors today. If you are a Facebook user, share the word of God. Share the blessing that we have. So take your phone and share it with your inner circle of friends. Every time that you share, it makes a difference. I can tell you, it makes a difference because more people are able to partake of the blessing of the Lord. This afternoon at 6 p.m., we have a special program here at the church. After a couple of weeks, and if we can look at the, the pictures, after a couple of weeks of hard work and dedication, finally our adventurers are going to be inducted. Can I get an amen? Uh, it's been a blessing for my life. I've been able to participate in most of this event, and it's been great work. And uh, we would like to sh show our adventurers how much we love them and how much we care for them. It's going to be at 6 p.m. It's going to be a beautiful program, and you don't want to miss that out. We're going to also have, uh, you know, uh, saying uh, Vespers uh, to close out the Sabbath together here at the church. And that is also a blessing in itself. So please join us today at 6 for Adventurers Induction Ceremony. Moving on, uh, Sister uh, Pearl White, as Sister Jessica just shared with us, um, departure and um, sleeps in the Lord. Uh, as her church family, we've been invited to her funeral service this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m. And it will take place at uh, the Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home on 23rd and Harrison here in Panama City. We encourage you to keep uh, Jack that is here with us. Jack, we love you. We love you. Do we love Jack? Yes. Jack, we love you. Your church family is here with you, and we're going to keep praying for you. And we're going to be there that day to uh, uh, be with you and just uh, with the rest of the family. So we are... Um, at these times, we, we need to pray even more. We need to cling to the promises of God and the blessed assurance that one day 
He will come back for us. Amen? He will come back for us. And we will be reunited with our loved ones. And God will take us to a place where there will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more COVID. We will be free and free indeed. And we will worship God for eternity. How many of you long for that day? So, Brother Jack, we believe in this blessed assurance. And we will be there for you this coming Tuesday at 1 p.m. Okay? Uh, moving on. Last Sunday... Some of our leaders enjoyed a beautiful day up in Montgomery, and it was in the context of the constituency meeting. Every five years, um, our leaders uh, from a conference level are selected, and we as a church family, we have a say, we have a vote, right? And uh, let me tell you that our church was well represented. Uh, Elder uh, Brian Denise was re-elected as president of the Gulf States Conference, and in addition to him, Elder Martin Fancher was elected as the executive vice president. I would like now to spend uh, a time to say thank you to all of our delegates who went up there, make or made the four-hour drive. Some of them s stayed there over the night. And I know uh, that you know who, who you guys are, but at the count of three, church family, I would like for us to say thank you, delegates. Can we say that all together? Just to let them know how much we appreciate their effort and their time. No, we're ready at the count of three. Thank you, delegates. One, two, and three. Thank you, delegates. God bless you. <laughs> Last week, uh, I challenged you to join me in a season of prayer for the Panama City SDA Church. Ellen White says in the Steps to Christ that unceasing prayer is the unbroken union of the soul with God. The unbroken union. We truly need that union as we live in this day and age. So all Wednesdays of October, starting this coming Wednesday, who can tell me at what time that event is going to be? 6.30 a.m. 6.30 a.m. And we're going to pray for 45 minutes from 6.30 to 7.15. And then at 7.15, you can move on with your day, go to your workplace, and whatever the case may be, you'll have 45 minutes if it is the case that you need to be there at 8. There's no sermon. We're just going to pray. We're going to sing. And we're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord in the solitude, in the quietness of early morning. Do you remember how David said, early in the morning I come before you, right? This is what we're going to do, and this program has been a blessing in my life in the past, so I encourage you, this coming uh, Wednesday and the following Wednesday, it's four Wednesdays at 6.30 a.m. We're going to pray for the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray for our needs. We're going to pray for um, everything that's going on in the world. But from a personal standpoint, you want to partake of this event, so you are more than welcome to join us. Last but not least, um, there's a group of five people who are requesting to transfer to the Panama City SDA Church. Their membership, they want to become members of our church. And there's one extra person who is transferring from the Panama City SDA Church. So I'd like to ask our church, our clerk, Sister Marguerite Bellew, to join me here in the pulpit to read for the first time this list of names. Sister Marguerite. Good morning, church family. I'm. Uh, pleased to read to you as the first reading uh, the recommendations of the church board to be for these names to be presented to you for your consideration. Uh, the five names requesting transfer to the Panama City Church are Johnny Shipbaugh from the North Bay Seventh Day Adventist Church, and I see Johnny's here this morning. Janice Shipbaugh from the North Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have William Franz from the Murfreesboro, Mur Tennessee Seventh-day Adventist Church, and his wife, Terry, 
uh, Franz, and adult daughter, Laura Franz, all from the uh, uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have one request for transfer of membership from the Panama City Church, and that is from Laura Adkinson to the Lynchburg, uh, Lexington, I'm sorry, Lexington, North Carolina Seventh-day Adventist Church. So this is the first of two readings. If you would like to uh, uh, speak with the pastor about any uh, transfer, please contact him during the coming week. And again, there will be a second reading at which time we'll take a vote to uh, grant the request for transfers. Thank you. Church family, let us worship together. Amen. Amen. This truth can be found A promise to stand on Where darkness abound But right never loses And wrong never win And grace will always be greater than sin. Grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary have proven in time Broken and bruised from the choices you've made, sin had a price, and so often you paid. Oh, but Jesus is waiting. New Hope is in him, and grace will always be greater than sin. Grace will always be greater than sin. Wherever you've 
sing. Grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary have proven in time and again whatever you've done wherever you've been God grace will always be greater than sin God's grace will always be Happy Sabbath, everyone. And we thank Sister Lawson for that meditation song. It was wonderful. Our meditation passage of scripture is coming to us from Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. You looked on while I read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God move upon the face of the water. Here hence a portion of God's word. May the church say amen. amen. One, two. Good morning, Panama City Saints. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Is anybody grateful this morning? If you are blessed, can we say hallelujah together? If you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, can we say amen? Can we say glory be to God? What a blessed day to be a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. It's a beautiful morning and I, can, I couldn't be more excited. Despite everything that's going on, there's a sense of peace. And that is the peace that Paul talks about, the one that surpasses all understanding. Amen? That's the one that we believe in. Now let's have a word of prayer before we dive into today's message. Lord, this morning we come before you. And we would like to enjoy the blessing of your presence in our midst. Would you please come with us? Would you please receive our worship this morning, our adoration? We, pr we pray, Lord, that you would send the Holy Spirit to instruct us, to comfort us, to speak to us in a way that it may result in full obedience. I pray that every distraction at this moment is removed. I pray that the defenses of our hearts are brought down, are tumbled down in a way that your word is able to come and be a reality in us. Help us enjoy this time in the word. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Okay, saints, as you can see, we're going to start by reading a Bible verse. It was the scripture reading. It's found in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1 and 2. It's a very familiar passage for many of us, so I would like for us to read it together at the count of three. Do we got it? We're going to read together. One, two, and three. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Saints, we just read a passage that is problematic for many people. And there's been a lot of controversy around these two verses throughout church history. 
So let me walk you through the three main issues that emerge from that text. The first issue is that this text uh, brings uh, something revolving around the theory of creatio ex nihilo, which is Latin for creation out of nothing. Creation out of nothing. As you can see up in the PowerPoint slide, this is the first issue that the text present. Why is that? Well, Arianism and natural selection have an issue with the fact that something is not able to be created out of nothing. Um, the issue here is that it refers to the fact that matter is not eternal in itself, but it has to be created by some divine being that we define and we call God. The second issue that the, tech, the text brings revolves around the doctrine of the Trinity. There's an assumption, right? The text says in verse 1, in the beginning God, the first person of the Trinity created. Then in verse 2, it says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And that is the second person of the Trinity. Now, if you go back to uh, John 1, 1, you'll see that the same expression is used. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Is the same construction. So therefore, we believe as Christians that it's, uh, uh, it's safe to say that, that the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, was present in creation. So the whole Trinity is there. And the second issue that the text brings for many people like our, our, our um, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses friends and also our Mormon friends, they have an issue with this because they don't believe that this is the case. Now the third issue that the text brings revolves around this idea of without form and void. Without form and void. This third one is not as scientific or as theological as the first two, but it deals more with simple reasoning. It deals with some kind of logic that I would like us to pay attention this morning. It leads to a better understanding of Moses' intent when writing the Genesis account. So we're going to pay attention to the third issue without form and void. Now, let me tell you a story to show you what I mean. As you can see, English is not my first language, right? So I spent a decent amount of time going over the meaning of words, making sure that what I'm trying to communicate, uh, it's in point, right? Making sure that my words are where they are supposed to be, especially when it comes to reading the Bible, when it comes to Scripture. So a couple of months ago, I came across this language of without form and void in Genesis 1-2. And just like I said, this is familiar for many of us who grew up in the church and are acquainted to the Bible. But that morning, for some reason, it hit me different. So I went back to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and confirmed that void means completely empty. Completely empty. Then I asked myself, how is it that something completely empty can be without form have you ever thought of that how is it that something that is empty the bible says that also it was without form in other words if there's nothing there's no room for form because form is the visible shape or configuration of something so that's when i was challenged by the third issue in the text and the one that we are, we are going to discuss this morning. What does without form and void in Genesis 1 and 2 mean? What is the meaning of that expression? Without form and void. Without form and void. Once I was puzzled by this language, I stopped for a minute and prayed. Then I reading the creation account because I figured that the Bible was going to be able to explain itself. I kept going and going through the text. So I made some interesting observations in the following verses. I tried to determine the, 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 the phrases and the words that were repeated in the text. I tried to, to look for, for uh, what I call road maps. Words that I don't understand go back to the dictionary. What's the theology in the text? 
What, what is the, the historical context? What, what, what's going on in the text? What are the different views that are presented in the text? I'm, I'm going over all of these uh, uh, hassle just to figure it out. What's the meaning of without form and void? So I made some observations. As you can see up in the screen, on the first day, God made light and darkness. Everybody say light and darkness. They were separated from one another and they were given names. To the light, God called day. To the darkness, God called night. Now on the second day, God made the sky and placed it between the waters above and the waters below. That is a whole sermon in itself, so I'm not going to get into that. It was the creation of the atmosphere. The word heavens in the passage, it comes from the Hebrew this chamajin, which refers to that which is above and beyond the physical ground, the atmosphere, is created in day two. Now, on the third day, God created dry land and all plants that grow on the earth. Those plants that bear fruit, He created the seeds, right? If you look at day four, God made the stars and everything that exists in the universe above, right? He created the two great stars. He created uh, the moon. He created also the sun and all the stars up uh, in the sky. And the seasons were marked. This particular uh, action of creation. Now, on day five, God made the birds in the sky and all the sea creatures that you can find in the ocean. That's day five. And on the sixth day, God gave life to all the beasts and the creeping things and livestock that exist on the dry land. He also made man, and man was created in the image of God. He was given authority over all the creatures. We know that. Let me share some of my observations with you. Notice how you can find two different sets in the creation account. The first three days are one set. And the second three days are another set. Pay attention. The first set, uh, it's, it was meant to create space, right? The first day was, or, or the first set, the first three days was meant to create space. And then the second set, the second three days were meant to fill the space that was created in the first set. Does that make sense? So let me walk you through my logic here. So whatever was created in day four was to fill the space that was open or available in day one. Whatever was created in day five was to fill the space that was available in day two. Let me give you some examples. In the first day, I mean in the fourth day, God created... In the fourth day, God created... The sun, the moon, and the stars, right? We can see if we go back that in day one, light and darkness was created. So the sun, the moon, and the star come to be the filling of day one. The same thing if you go back to, to, to day uh, five. The flying, uh, the sea creatures were created and they were meant to fill the sky that was created in day two. So there's this, this dynamics going on in the creation account where that which is without form is created with space and then is filled in the second set of days. Is this making sense? Okay, so let's move forward. Now, uh, the Bible says in Genesis 1.31, it says, God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was good. Is that what the Bible says? It was very good. There's emphasis. God wants, wants to mean it. He says, and it was very good. Then the Bible says that there was evening and there was morning. The sixth day. That's how the first chapter of the book of Genesis ends. So now that all the space is given form... In the first three days and then filled in the second three days. You may think that the whole point of without form and void is already made. Right? You may think that the issue of configuration, shape, and 
completeness is already solved. Note that God even paused and evaluated that everything that he has made, just like we said, was very good. However, <laughs> we realize that although creation was almost over, God's intention with creation was not. Something was missing. Something we need to consider. There's something else for us to ponder and all, all, something else for us to analyze. Therefore, well, let, let us go to Genesis chapter 2 now. And that's when the language of without form and void takes a new meaning. I want you to read uh, Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 with that phrase in mind, without form and void. This is what the Bible says. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished with his work and that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Verse 3 says, So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is what the Bible says. Now, what is the relationship of this particular passage with the expression, without form and void. Well, for starters, you can see here that a new space is created. Yes or no? A new space is created. But this space is different. This space is distinct. This space is special. There's something special about this one. This one was not made as part of the first or the second sets of days that we talked about in the beginning of the narrative. God made the seventh day, separating it from the others because he wanted to make it holy. Saint, the Sabbath it's a palace in time. A palace in time. Can we say that all together? A palace in time. A palace in time. The Sabbath is meant to be a monument in space. God created or formed a very significant, significant temporal space. But much more than that, he also filled the time with his presence. See the beauty of that? It is not that like in the other days he created something and then it filled it with something else. With a creature, with a being. No, 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 no. The seventh day was created on a class by its own. And then it was filled with something that we cannot explain. It was filled with his presence. Can I get an amen? It was filled with his presence. Thus, it is in the context of the Sabbath day that the issue of configuration, shape, completeness is solved. You see that? If, you were to if we were to stay with the first six days, what that means is that there's no need for God in our lives. Does that make sense? Let me walk you through some other thoughts. The reason why God separated the Sabbath and then came and blessed it and made it holy and provided his presence in it. It is that the Sabbath, the whole point of creation, finds its culmination in the Sabbath. Forming and filling come together in the Sabbath. In other words, man is not the point of creation. <laughs> Do you see that? Man is not the point of creation, but God is the point of creation. It is He. It is His presence. It is, it is whatever is uh, attached to Him. It is in His worship, in His adoration, that we are able to find shape, that we are able to find completeness, that we are able to be configured. Creation without a, a seventh day of rest is lacking form and is void. The text states that on the seventh day, God finished his work 
that he had done. Think about this for a moment. Think about this for a moment. An almighty God finds a time to cease exercising its power. An all-knowing God finds a space where he does not have to display his knowledge. If God would have wanted, he would have continued to create more and more and even more days and even more nights and even more creatures and even more skies and more stars and more oceans. He was able to create new things for eternity. You see that? The almighty, all-knowing God chose to finish his work. Despite having an infinite set of options to pull from, he chose to stop. He was satisfied. Let's repeat that. He was satisfied. He was satisfied. In his mind, there was no, there was not a pending creative project to take care of. There was no intention of upgrading anything because what he had already accomplished was perfect. It was very good. So he chose to rest. It's an election. It's a choice. It comes from his will. This is what he wants, right? He declared himself satisfied. Did you know that God said the perfect example for keeping the Sabbath? It is he who gives sense to the Sabbath. He created and filled the Sabbath day. And only then, only and only then, creation, the earth, the ground, ceased, stopped to being without form and void. God was satisfied. Saint, let me ask you. If an almighty, all-knowing God was satisfied. If an almighty, all-knowing God was satisfied. Why is it that you never are? Why is it that it is so difficult for you to stop? Six days. Six days. And yet we cannot stop. God, the only being capable of making everything possible, limited himself. Over the course of four years, we go to college, right? We work so hard to get that degree. Then we graduate. We work so hard to 
to, to get to put some money into our pockets. Then we get married and we work so hard to provide for our families. Then we get retired and we work so hard to enjoy our retirement. And we want more. And we cannot have more. And we need more. And we never have enough. And there's always some room for improvement. There's always some room for something else. For, for the next thing. There's always another project. There's always another phone call. There's always another client. And another email. And another meeting. And another shift. And another job and another business and another game and another another situation and another uh, person that I need to attend and another conversation that I need to have. There's always another and another and another. The truth is that we are never satisfied. But the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time for everything. There is a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heavens. But it seems that we cannot find time for rest. And you know, I don't speak English. So I don't know if the phrase for rest... It's correct. If you say we cannot find time for rest, that's okay? Okay. I want to make a distinction between finding time for rest and finding time to rest. Is there a difference? Is there a difference? Let me see if I got it right. Time to rest. Must be found every day. You need to rest. You need to sleep. You need to do some self-care. Otherwise, you won't be able to, to go on, right? You need to find time to rest. But the issue with the time to rest revolves around the fact that the time to rest... It's narcissistic in nature. This is what you want. This is what you need. This is what you, uh, 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 what you need. On the other hand, time for rest. It's centered around someone else other than me. Is this making sense? Time for rest. It's a conscious decision to be satisfied. And the setting aside of 24 hour, a 24 hour period, we set aside for the Creator as it was instituted in creation. Time for rest assumes. That homework and wait. And yet, you will get the A. Time for rest assumes that money will be enough. Time for rest. Money will be enough. Time for rest supposes the words of the psalmist when he says, I was young <laughs> and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. That is time for rest. I don't need an extra shift. I need time for rest. Time for rest means that I can stop and contemplate how good the Lord is and say, He is very good indeed. Amen? That is time for rest. Rest. 
saints, as we find time for rest on the Sabbath day, we celebrate creation just like in Genesis 1. But we also celebrate our redemption. You see the beauty of that? Celebrate that God, the all-knowing, the almighty, the all-powerful, the unchangeable, the untamable, the, the, <clears throat> the, the all-merciful God created the heavens and the earth. We celebrate that. But we also celebrate that Jesus Christ came for you and me to die on that cross. And our sin has been paid. Our debt is paid. And now we have access to the heavenly, to the heavenly Father. And now we've been forgiven. And He's coming back for us. And we're going to be with Him. And now I'm free from the bondage of sin. And I am a faithful Christian. And I can enjoy the blessing of the Sabbath day. Because I've been redeemed. I am free. Free indeed in Jesus' name. And G. White says, so the Sabbath is assigned to every Christian for the creative power of God in his deliverance from the power of sin. Are you struggling with the sin? You need Jesus, but you also need time for rest. Therefore, the atmosphere of this day should be one of joy and delight. Everybody say joy and delight. Joy and delight. During this time, we serve special meals and we try the best foods. There should be special music played in the background in the house. This is the day to have clean sheets and enjoy the fragrance of incense in the rooms and come to the church to rejoice in the fact that we are faithful and forgiven Christians. This is the day. This is the time. This is the space for us to rejoice in our redemption. Freedom. That's the whole point of coming to worship on Sabbath morning. That's why we're here, because of what we have already experienced. We are making the conscious decision of finding time for rest. I had the privilege of growing up in a Sabbath-keeping home. And as I look back, I realize that growing up, the Sabbath could be summarized in three words. How many words? words number one arepas what's that corn pancakes first word that comes to mind sabbath day corn corn pancakes arepas number two worship worship number three sharing if i close my eyes and i think hard about the Sabbath day growing up, I can vividly tell you that I can smell the hot chocolate early in the morning coming out of the kitchen, just made from grandma. The arepas just freshly made. The background music, it was not unpleasant, although it was waking me up. King's Heralds, Heritage Singers, waking up, taking a shower, going to, to worship. Having an awesome Sabbath school, enjoying with my friends, worshiping my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, coming back to, to the house and sharing the most, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the yummiest, is that a word? <laughs> the yummiest food of the week. Finding some time to rest. And then going out to share with others. How faithful God has been. Arepas, worship, sharing. Saints, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Let me tell you that this morning, I 
I am not concerned with God creating out of nothing. I am not concerned about that. This morning, I am not concerned with the Trinity being involved in creation. But I am concerned about someone in this room whose life is without form and void. Saint, it, it seems that you have taken upon yourself to solve the issue of shape. You want to solve yourself the issue of the configuration of your life. You have taken upon yourself solving the issue of completeness. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I have to tell you this in the name of Jesus. Because you have taken upon yourself this authority. That is why you need the extra call. That is why you need that extra project. That is why you need that extra business. That is why you need that extra email. That is why you need some extra money. That is why you want an extra client. But let me tell you. That God created a sacred, a sacred space in time so that we can find rest. And He filled such space with His presence, with His glory. His being is, can you feel it? Can you feel him in our midst? Speaking to your heart, asking you to rest, speaking to your ears through the Holy Spirit. You can declare yourself satisfied. You can make the conscious decision of resting. As I close here, I want to speak to two different candidates. The first camp is those who are still struggling with making the Sabbath their day of rest. When you go out there and you share Bible studies with people, it comes the time where the Sabbath, it's the, how you say, the, the block, the, 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 not the building block, but the, the hindrance, right? The hindrance for them to, to become part of this faith. So if you are in this first camp where you feel like, I cannot commit to faith because of the Sabbath day, I'm going to tell you in the name of Jesus, He will provide. Amen? He will. Day or another, one way or another, He will provide for you, for your needs, for your family, for your friends, for your children, for your knowledge, for your, your, your desires, for your goals, for the degree, for the business. He will provide. So to this first camp, I tell you in the name of Jesus, find time for rest. But there's another camp that I want to speak to this morning. And it's the camp of those who are already part of the faith. 
but we have destroyed or not even take advantage as a whole of the blessing that the Sabbath is. Make it yours, although it's not. Wake up early. Rejoice in the fact that you are not bound to the stereotype of a, a, a never, of, of an always going culture. They are slaves, but we are free. And we are free indeed in the name of Jesus. Come to worship. Smile. Open up your mouth and sing to the Lord and Savior indescribable. Worthy is the Lamb. Come thou fount of every blessing. in mind that the only one to both camps I say the only one that can solve the issue of shape configuration and completeness is God I want to know if there's someone that would like to join me I commit myself before you publicly and I say, Lord, I will find time for rest. If that is you, I would like to ask you to stand at this moment. We're going to pray together. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. God is good. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. Time for rest. Let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, as broken, finite, finite human beings, we come before you this Sabbath morning. Why is it so hard for us to stop why is it that we are never satisfied? I pray, Lord, on behalf of this congregation, that as we commit to trust in you and find time for rest, to enjoy your presence in your holy day, I pray that you would give us that assurance. That peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace that the world is not able to provide. Help us to experience that. For those of us who are in that camp where we are not able to make that conscious decision. Allow them to challenge you. And prove them wrong. Now, for those of us who are not making the most out of the Sabbath, refresh us, rejuvenate us, and bring completeness into our lives. It's in your name that we pray. that 
will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come and we thank you once again for the privilege that we've had to hear this message. We pray that you'll continue to guide and direct us. And we, Lord, we're looking forward to that day when we do all get to heaven and be able to have that Sabbath rest with you in heaven. Guide and direct us now is our prayer in your loving name. Amen. Amen. 